why did you and Holyfield break up? Because I love you. <laughs> you you just well, you just went through. You got me sold. I, I'm not looking for a crowd. I'm not. People are not going to understand me. It seemed like you two were two birds of a feather right off the bat. And you know, why did it break up? I I I'm going to tell you. I don't know if he's ever heard me say this, so this is going to be interesting. Um, I I think we were. I think we honestly were two birds of a feather. I think the problem is number one that young. Our careers both, you know, elevating. Um, I think two things happened. One, he started having kids, a lot of kids. And that's just not who I am. And that's not the environment that I was raised in with my mother and father. Um, I'm a very monogamous spirit most of the time. And so I just didn't know at that point, I didn't know how to navigate a man who was having babies with five and six different women. And so that Hold on, was little... while y'all were in relationship? Well, no, I'm just saying like at the time. You know, uh, well, one, yes, one happened while we were in a relationship. And then there was two and then three and four. And I was like, oh, so this is just who you are. This is what you do. Got it. I got to go. And, and, you know, we can <laughs> stay friends. Right. And I also feel and and I would love to hear his take on this, but it was very hard for him to watch my star take off. He was supportive, but I think what he needed, which I got to say, I think a lot of successful men need is more of the woman who supports not the woman who they feel like time and energy is going to be competitive. And not that it has to be competitive, but it, there's a balance that's required. When you're both busy, you're both successful, you're both famous, you know, you're both mm -hmm. wealthy. There's a, there's a different mm -hmm. thing. There's a different dance you have to do. And at that time, I just don't think we were mature enough to know how to dance. Hmm. Okay. Um, we know about <laughs> your face. Your face is like, okay. All right. No, because ultimately we know this man likes to have kids. He he went on to have about eleven by six different women. He spreads his seed. Yes. So. And and let me tell you what's really funny now. I meet and know his kids, and they're like, you know you're supposed to be my mama, right? And I was like, I know. Stop. We're not gonna take <laughs> <laughs> You know you're supposed to be my mama, right? I was like, well, let's let's start bring up old shit. I understand. <laughs> But, you know, let's just keep it moving. So now the kids are old enough to know our history. Hilarious. Wow. Wow. Hilarious. Okay, so, speak, speaking of history, um, and then we go, we'll keep it moving in your story. But this man, he goes on to become one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all time. He was the one who showed the world that Mike Tyson is mortal. Were you there ringside or even in the building when Mike Tyson bit his ear off? I was. I was. Whoa. I was there. I was ringside. And what's really deep about that moment is that being in, being in the arena and being so close to the ring, you, honestly, you, you, saw, you saw Holyfield's response and his reaction to it. You saw blood, but you didn't know what it was. And of course, with no commentary... You don't really know what's going on. And of course, they stopped the fight and there's commotion, but you still don't know what's going on. So we're in the arena calling people who are not in the arena, like, what just happened? They're stopping the fight. What just happened? And so people outside are telling us, yo, Tyson just bit his ear. We're like, what? So now we're watching <laughs> real time and on the phone. It was crazy, crazy. And um, I just remember when the dust settled an hour or two later, like after all the craziness, um, he was in shock. He was in shock. And, you know, you know, Evander has always been a very strong spirit. He comes from a very spirited family. His mom, rest her soul, was, was a very hard praying woman, a Christian woman. And so his spirit has always been very strong. And I just remember him saying, you know, I, we just, you know, I need you to join me in prayer to understand what this is about. He was saying that then. He was like, mm. I just need you to join me in prayer to understand what this is about. And so that, our spirits also kept us connected. You know, I just, listen, I believe sometimes, and my life is a testimony to this. Sometimes you can be connected in spirit and that connection doesn't work in the world. And mm -hmm, so a lot mm -hmm. of times I've come to say, you know what? We, we have amazing connection, but clearly that this is why it's not working as a relationship because we're just not, our, our spirit connection is stronger than our worldly connection. And that's, that's a very mature spirit that has to understand that. And I've worked at that because it's been more of my life than great relationships. And so, you know, I, I, I prayed with him. I stayed with him. 
Um, I think even at the time, there must have been a baby mom or girlfriends around. But again, <laughs> I mean, probably, you know, probably. But it didn't matter because we had a connection that was so deep and so long and strong that I wanted to be there for him. And I think he wanted me to be there for him. Very nice. Very nice. And I think he needed it at that time. He yeah. He really did. And to this day, um, well, we, we still connect. We still say hello when we can. You know, we still, I still run and jump on him like he's a big old tree when I see him. <laughs> you know, I mean, that kind of connection doesn't go anywhere years later. You know, our souls are still the same. No, nah, that's so nice. And that's the way it should be. Amen. It really Amen. is. 